Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through Chapter 9.2, Strong Axis and Bases. All right, now, remember the term strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte, non-electrolyte, okay? Electrolytes were those things that would uh, dissociate in water to form ions. A strong electrolyte dissociated completely in water to form ions with no parent molecule, right? Remember that? So a strong acid is a strong electrolyte. The word strong, it tells me it's, it's an electrolyte and it dissociates completely in water. So a strong acid dissociates in water forming hydronium and other ions. For example, HCl is a strong acid. We get hydronium plus chlorine, or chloride, excuse me. That will be aqueous. This will be aqueous. And this will be a gas. If we had a vat of water, and we added HCl gas to it, we would get a whole bunch of hydronium and chloride ions. But we would have no HCl molecule. in solution. Why not? Because hydrochloric acid, HCl, is a strong acid. As soon as it hits water, it dissociates completely to give you hydronium and chloride. No, hydrochlor no hydrogen chloride molecule exists in water because it's a strong acid. Just like a strong electrolyte dissociates completely in water to give you their ions, a strong acid dissociates completely in water as well to give you hydronium and the counter ion and the, um, the anion, I will say. Okay? Now, from this list, you might want to write this one down, this one down, and that one down. And maybe that one too. These are the common strong acids. The, the other ones are strong as well, but they're just less common in our society. So we don't even want to write them down. It's just not worth writing them down for this class, in my opinion. All right? So those are strong acids. Now, there are also weak acids. There are strong electrolytes and weak electrolytes. Well, strong acids, strong bases. I'm sorry, pardon me, strong acids, weak acids. Strong acid dissociates completely 100%, no parent molecule in solution. Weak acids dissociate only slightly, or as your book would say, partially. Now look at the number. 5% dissociation. That means 95% is the parent molecule. Let's take this example. This is acetic acid. Commonly found in vinegar. Say we had a vat of vinegar. This is filled with water. We add vinegar, or the, we add the acid. Let me back that up. This, that's the same thing. Oops. Let me get my pointer. This thing and this thing are the same thing. Okay? So we add this acid into here. And what do we have? We have a whole bunch of the parent molecule. Why? Because it's a weak acid. Kind of messy there, but the red ones are anions, okay? It's pretty messy. Uh, let, me, let me try to make that a little nicer for you guys. I'm trying to draw that again for you guys. Let me draw the anions in first. So there are the anions. And what you'll have is mostly the parent molecule. Mostly um, 
parent molecule. So it's mostly this, mostly that in the solution. That's how uh, weak acids and bases are. It's mostly the parent in the solution. Now, um, that's pretty much it for weak and, weak and strong acids. That's how, that, how it works. Now, a lot of acids are weak. A lot of bases are weak. This is how kind of how it is. All right, guys. So strong acid dissociates completely in water to give you anions and cations, no parent molecule. Weak acids dissociate only slightly to give you cations and anions. Well, hydronium and anion. But most of the parent molecule remains intact in solution. Now, how do we tell? Look at that arrow right there. As long as you have hydronium on the right and this arrow system here, you have a weak acid. This arrow to the right, half arrow to the left, means it's in what's called equilibrium, which we'll get to later on. It means it's reversible. The reaction is going back and forth. In a strong acid base reaction, the arrow only goes to the right. It does not go to the left. Okay? All right. Now, strong bases, things that have OH and a metal. So basically look for a metal uh, ion and hydroxide. If you have those two things, you have a strong base. They're used as oven cleaners and drain openers in, in our home. They're pretty dangerous. You can be careful with them. So a strong base dissociates completely, just like a strong acid. So uh, NaOH, for example, it's a solid. It's a solid material. Cations, anions. No sodium hydroxide in solution. All you have are anions and cations. No parent molecule because it's strong. Again, a weak base dissociates only about five or will dissociate only about five percent. And ammonia, NH3. Basically, if you want to know if you have a weak base, look for nitrogen. Nitrogen is kind of a giveaway that you have a weak base. All right. NH3 ammonia is a good example of that, but there are thousands of other ones. Okay. Look for nitrogen. Most often that nitrogen will be basic. Okay. And it'll be weakly basic too, not strong. Neutralization reactions. Now, when you add an acid to a base, the same thing always occurs. You'll form water. Just take it to the bank. You're going to form water. That's how it is. All strong acids and strong bases react to give you water. Now, when we formed water, this hydrogen and this OH made this. Okay, so those three things, the two hydrogens and the one oxygen, went to the right, formed water. What's left? Chloride plus sodium. So one of the other products is sodium chloride. Salt. So all acid-base reactions, write this down, all acid-base reactions, oh, sorry, all strong acid-base reactions, let me be very specific. All strong acid-base reactions form a salt and water. I'm going to pause because someone's calling me, even though I say don't, don't call me. Email. Antacids. Antacids are used to neutralize stomach acid, such as hydrochloric acid, which is what's in your stomach. Now, antacids are generally, well, I shouldn't say generally speaking, antacids are bases. That's what they are. You add a base to your belly to calm down the uh, acid so that you'll feel a little better. A lot of them are made of hydroxide. You can get certainly get ones that are made of hydroxide. There are also others that are made with the carbonates, the hydrogen carbonates and the carbonates. Those are uh, also very commonly used. And uh, sometimes you'll see that they put uh, calcium carbonate in there because it's a you know good source of calcium, I suppose. But those are antacids. So when you uh, consume the carbonates or the bicarbonates, what do you get as a product? You get salts and water, just like I told you acids and bases would do, and you get CO2. You get CO2 gas. That's a byproduct of neutralizing your stomach acid with carbonates. Pretty cool, huh? 
And that is the end of 9.2. So meet me back here for 9.3 in a few minutes. All right, guys. Uh, wish you want. I want to always wish you good luck and good chemistry.